Hey, welcome to Viking Preparedness. I am Pastor Joe Fox. Today I want to talk to you about chainsaws, carving your little place out of the wilderness. If you're going to do any kind of serious homesteading, be a neo-pioneer like we are, you're going to have to get familiar with chainsaws. And like many things in homesteading, chainsaws are inherently dangerous. Right? They do a really good job cutting down trees and cutting up wood, but uh, they can cut up you too. And so you got to take some steps to be careful. Um, I need to spend some more money before I chainsaw anymore. Let's talk about that. One thing you should have is a hard hat. When you're cutting trees and limbs off of trees and stuff, stuff falls, right? And even though you try to be careful and try not to be in the way, stuff falls. And so you want to get yourself a hard hat. Now, this hard hat has seen better days and I don't have a better one to replace it with. It came with little uh, hearing protectors that would flip down and it had a visor that comes in front of your face. You need both of those because chips fly, twigs fly, stuff flies, and even though you have safety glasses, which I recommend you wear underneath your visor, um, you should have a visor in front of your helmet and you need hearing protection. You don't have to have, you know, like this kind right here that, you know, you wear under it or whatever, or on this helmet, it came with little things. This is a pretty cheap helmet. I'm buying a better one next time. Um, but you need something to protect your ears because chainsaws are loud and you don't want to hurt your hearing. The other thing you really, really need is chaps. These are made out of Kevlar and sometimes the saw moves where you don't want it to and you want it to hit Kevlar, not you, right? A chainsaw cut is an ugly thing. You're gonna want gloves, of course, leather gloves, <clears throat> uh, but you don't want to get cut with your chainsaw. I learned something from a friend of mine, Brother Cody, and he's a professional chainsaw guy. You know, I don't know what his title is, but this man will climb 60, 80 feet up in a tree with a chainsaw. He's got the belt and all the climbing gear, and he's just cutting limbs and dropping them down, and he makes everything go just like he wants it. And he had this first aid kit that he carried on himself all the time when he was chainsaw. Matter of fact, he had it hooked onto his chaps. I need new chaps because my buckles are breaking on mine. And so I'm gonna get a new pair of chaps. And I contacted my friends at campingsurvival.com, Tom Shaka, and I said, Tom, I want a very simple chainsaw first aid kit. And he goes, okay, we don't sell that. What do you want in it? I said, two things. Now I got this idea from my buddy Cody and, uh, he had a little pouch like this, so the one from CampingSurvival.com comes with a little pouch, has nice belt loops right here so you can stick it on anything you want. You could use fast ties to stick it on something else if you wanted to, but the key is you want this with you when you're chainsawing, and so it can't be heavy. You're already carrying your saw, you're carrying gas, you got all your gear, you just need something light. But I'm telling you, when a chainsaw cut happens, get on YouTube and find some chainsaw cuts. They're horrific, right? And you need to stop major bleeding now or you can die out there, especially if you're out there on your own. So this comes with a simple little pouch and it only has two things in it because that's all I wanted because that's what my friend Cody had in his. The first one is a cat tourniquet, right? When you need to stop a lot, and you know what? If you cut yourself with a chainsaw, you're probably cutting yourself on a leg. It's just how it's gonna go. You should learn how to put on a cat tourniquet. I'm not doing that in this video. Uh, you should have it sized already to go over your leg and, and uh, crank that baby down. Videos on YouTube, uh, the skinnymedic.com comes to mind. Um, but yeah, a cat tourniquet. The other thing, sea locks. And this is a five yard, five feet, excuse me, three inches by five feet long, and it has the, uh, like the quick clot stuff in it. And so slap the tourniquet on, wrap this around it, or if it's just a little, a little boo-boo, but that's bleeding significantly, uh, you can put this on the quick clot. And what I like about this is it's in the gauze. I got the pick from a lot of different things that Camping Survival sells. They sell all kinds of quick clot type sea lock stuff. Um, this is the one I want because Five feet long, three inches wide. I can wrap that around tight and uh, stop the bleeding. Tourniquet, stop significant bleeding, and just a little simple rugged pouch 
um, that holds it. Could you put more in here? Absolutely. There is room in this pouch to put more stuff, but I'm not gonna. This is all I'm keeping in here it is this. I'm gonna keep it snapped. I'm gonna hook it to my chaps and I'm gonna have it when I'm out there chainsawing. Yah forbid I cut the heck out of myself with a chainsaw. Truth be told, most of the time we chainsaw at Shofar Mountain, we do it in groups. And so there's several men running chainsaws at the same time. Uh, I would like every one of them to get this, but if they don't, at least I'll have mine and we can deal with an injury. Like I said, God forbid it happens, but we can. If you're interested in this, uh, I'll put a link down below for it, campingsurvival.com. Yeah, it's kind of expensive because a cat tourniquet's expensive and quick clot, you know, sea locks type dressings are expensive. <laughs> um, he cut the price on both of those to make this kit so it's a little bit cheaper, but yeah, it's expensive, but a helmet's expensive, chaps are expensive, you know, good leather work gloves are expensive. You get what you pay for. Save your life. All right, the chainsaw first aid kit from campingsurvival.com. I recommend it because I designed it. All right, I'll see you out there.